I'm not that type of guy. Like, it's like, okay, we all know we like Mario, but I'm gonna pick Luigi. It's no good or bad, so it's no better or worse. It's just, it is what it is. I'm pretty young. When I start getting old, then I maybe start complaining, because you know, that's what old people do, complain. You know why my music is so sad? Why? Because I love my songs like my children that I don't have. And once the song is over, it's over. On to the next. Mm. It's sad. Like, mm. we can't do, I can't make one song forever. Lil Uzi Vert has once again taken the world by storm with his smash single, Just Wanna Rock. His unique sound and style have made him one of the biggest names in hip hop today. With his songs like EXO Tour Life and Money Longer, he has captured the heart of millions of fans. But who is the man behind the music? In this untold documentary, we take a deep dive into the story and career of Lil Uzi Vert. Born Symir Woods in 1994 on July 31st, Lil Uzi Vert grew up in the Francisville neighborhood of North Philadelphia. As a child, he was drawn to music, as music was always a passion for him. Lil Uzi taught himself how to play instruments like the trumpet, guitar, and drums for his school band. Uzi would not only be into hip hop, he found himself growing fond of the rock band The All American Rejects and rock musician Marilyn Manson at the mere age of 13. He studied Manson and got teased at school for it. Emo rock and anime would be a huge importance for the future of Uzi's career and he had yet to realize this. He was also voted for Class Clown. However, he had yet to find a stable friend group. He had gotten kicked out of school and would attend multiple throughout his duration in high school. He was I just got out of high school. I ain't go to high school. <laughs> Shit, I went to, I was I, in juvenile. I went to four high schools. He would then see one of his close friends, William Aston, remixing Chris Brown's smash hit, Look At Me Now, and getting major attention throughout his school. And he figured he wouldn't mind having this sort of attention too. Oh yeah, Look At Me Now. It's my friend, um, William Aston. He freestyled over Look At Me Now. And I wanted to be a rapper. He like had all the attention in high school. So I'm like, man. I got a rap too. Uzi figured he could do this as well and that being a rapper would be a way to get similar attention as Aston. He had never freestyled or rap before. However, he had already been influenced by rappers such as Meek Mill, Wiz Khalifa, and Lil Wayne. He then started rapping under the name Staketown Vertical, hanging and rapping with Aston, joining the group Staketown while still in high school and which gained more local attention with their first music video, Staketown Anthem. Hey, you already know, bitch, I do what I suppose. Due to focusing on rap, his grades fell and he was coerced to switch schools. After someone on the block saw Uzi rapping, he told Uzi how he rapped pretty fast, like a little Uzi or something. Really? How'd you get that name for the people I don't know? I know you man, I was rapping. Oh, man, I was rapping one day and um, some guy was like, man, you rap fast, man, like a like a little, like a, like a machine gun, like a little Uzi or something. And at that moment, I just like, little Uzi. Yeah, that's fire. Crazy. Yeah, just I told you, just be happy. This gave Uzi the idea to run with this name, and this is how he got the famous name, Lil Uzi Vert. After this, Uzi made a SoundCloud account, and he uploaded his initial tracks to this account. Uzi caught attention from DJ Buzzworthy and Charlie Heat, in which Charlie Heat would produce some of Uzi's earliest SoundCloud songs. His songs would get multiple plays, even getting local radio play. His motivation skyrocketed after this, and it was time to become the rock star that he was destined to be. Don Cannon of Atlantic Records saw the potential of Uzi, and he signed Uzi. He introduced Uzi to DJ Drama, and they brought Uzi to Atlanta to work on even more music. Due to the insistence of Don, he even got a song produced by Metro Boomin, which was huge for an underground artist. Uzi was featured on Carnage's 2015 song, What Do You Want?, with ASAP Ferg and Rich the Kid. His SoundCloud will be tuned in more. While signed to Don Cannon and DJ Drama's Generation Now, he gained even more of a fan base when he dropped the tape Love Is Rage 1 in October 2015. Uzi also got featured on the song Big Racks from Young Thug's Slime Season 2. Uzi got more popular from doing local interviews and his life would change forever in 2016. Lil Uzi would drop his second mixtape, Love vs. The World. This included staple songs such as You Was Right, P's and Q's, and his breakout single, Money Longer. He was now mainstream. It seemed like more and more successes came with Uzi being featured on one of his idols, Wiz Khalifa's song, A Luck. This was his first certified gold song. In June 2016, Lil Uzi was named a XXL freshman. In July 2016, XXL dropped their 2016 cycle.
Pfeiffer, which included other 2016 freshmen, such as Kodak Black, 21 Savage, Lil Yachty, and Dizel Curry. Love vs. The World gained more buzz due to his cypher and Money Longer and You Was Right became his first solo songs to chart. This was his break into finally becoming mainstream. Uzi and Playboy Carter will also become close friends and work on music together such as the song Woke Up Like This. On Fire, Lil Uzi dropped his second tape of the year, The Perfect Love Tape, which included staple hits today such as Erasure Social and of course We Ghetto Flowers featuring Cardi and Offset. This feature with Offset will foreshadow another collaboration between Uzi and Offset, but instead a connection with the entire Migos, who was already mainstream at the time. Both Uzi and Amigos complemented each other well because an already hot rap group connected with one of the hottest young artists to enter the rap game in 2016 just screamed viral. The song Bad and Bougie went crazy and peaked at number one on the Billboard Hot 100. This was both Amigos and Uzi's first chart topping number one song. The song also reached over 1 billion views on YouTube and is a staple for the 2010s hip hop. Wait, what kind of Rory? Four, 58. All of these niggas they hate, they hate. Try to hide you through the gate. Look, Uzi will end 2016 by recording more music and going on tour with The Weeknd. He dropped Love Is Rage 1.5 on SoundCloud to start off 2017, and this will lead to one of the best decisions. Uzi surprised everyone with Love Is Rage 1.5. It included a mystery song called EXO Tour Life, which caught major attention. It was inspired by the tour life he had while on tour with The Weeknd. It was voted one of the biggest songs of the year, and it is his biggest song to date, with it being over seven times platinum. Uzi would continue working on and promoting his first debut studio album. On August 25th, 2017, Uzi would drop his heavily anticipated Love Is Rage 2, which debuted at number one on the Billboard 200 chart and sold 135,000 copies first week and it proved that Uzi was no one hit wonder and was stamped. He was very consistent and had a good rep from fans across the world. That was until he started running into label problems which will almost cut his career short. Due to frustrations with his label, he was not able to drop music as frequently as he may have wanted. He teased an upcoming album, Eternal with Take, but he was not able to drop it, of course, because of the label issues. He was only able to drop one single in 2018, being New Paddock, and was forced to do singles in 2019 when he signed with Rock Nation. And he dropped four singles, being Free Uzi, That's a Rat, Sanjo in Paradise, and lastly, in December 2019, Futile Shuffle 2020, which acted as a lead single to Eternal with Take. The problem was, though, if the album even had a probability of dropping, this question will go on to be answered in 2020. The long wait for Lil Uzi to drop an album was finally put to rest on March 6, 2020, when Uzi dropped his second studio album, Eternal Tape. Allowing interaction for the fans to pick the cover art, the album sold 288,000 units in the first week, having at the time the fourth largest streaming debut in hip hop history. He then had a huge surprise the following week on March 13th, 2020, dropping Love vs. The World 2, which was the follow up to the 2016 project and acted as a deluxe version to Eternal Take. I'll never forget this day, sophomore year of high school. <laughs> the last day I was stepped foot into the building at that point in time, up until my senior year, two years later. To this day, I'm convinced the man's Uzi shut the world down with this album. The feeling me and my homies got when we first heard Baby Pluto, which was the intro track to Eternal Take, was crazy. Anyways, due to the COVID-19 outbreak, Uzi couldn't really tour. So he went on to drop a collab album with Future called Pluto X Baby Pluto. He dyed his hair back to a staple purple hair, hinting that 2016 Uzi was coming back. As for 2021, Uzi was pretty much quiet, getting back to shows and rolling loud sets. This will continue into 2022, as Uzi will also be pretty quiet in terms of new music. Uzi would do shows and small sets such as Summer Smash or Rolling Loud. That was until, of course, he shook the world again with another staple hit.
Uzi's song, Just Wanna Rock, was leaked on TikTok and Reels for the longest, with creators doing dance challenges to the song. It wasn't until October 17, 2022, that the actual song would drop on streaming platforms. Uzi did it again. He dropped another hit, which took off even more when he linked up with huge creator Kai Sinat for the music video that dropped on November 18, 2022, which peaked at number one on YouTube trending and number 10 on the Billboard Hot 100, spending 21 weeks on the chart. So what is the legacy of Lil Uzi Vert? Despite his ups and downs, Lil Uzi Vert's music continues to resonate with fans across the world. He's become one of the most influential artists of his generation, and his impact on the world of music is undeniable. The unique style, which blends elements of emo and trap music, has made him a popular figure in the rap scene, and he continues to prove year and year that he is here to stay. Thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed or disliked my content, you should consider commenting below as I read and respond to every comment to see any suggestions or feedback. Also, please consider checking out my weekly series called The Untold Documentaries for more cinematic style documentary videos. Appreciative.